Hello everyone, welcome to my first Silverlight 4 um, application tutorial. Um, I'm going to start off with just showing basics of uh, <coughs> uh, just kind of how to start an application and uh, show around a little bit what things do and uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, this is also my first um, YouTube application uh, tutorial, or actually tutorial at all, so please bear with me if I stutter a little bit. Um, please ignore it. I'm sure it'll get better as it goes. And you might hear a little bell in the background a little bit on and off. Uh, that's my uh, dog Curtis. So uh, he doesn't like to sit, sit still when I tell him to sit still. So that's probably what you might hear in the background every once in a while. So first off, um, let me just start by saying the newest um, Silverlight as of this tutorial is 4.0. Um, I'm going to be using Visual Studio 2010 Ultimate. Um, you can easily do any of these um, tutorials I'll be doing with um, Silver, or, um, with Visual Studio Express or any other version that supports two th um, uh, Silverlight 4. So let's start by clicking New Project. <clears throat> okay. And um, I'm assuming that you've already installed the um, Silverlight... Um, release candidate um, which includes not only plugins but um, all the SDK information um, and also it installs all these nice little t um, starter kits for um, uh, or templates for Visual Studio. Uh, the one we're going to start with is Silverlight application. Um, the business application is nice if you're doing canned stuff. Um, I particularly don't care for it only because it, 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 it kind of um, hinders you from doing a lot of your own stuff and you really are relied on what they call RAD or rapid application development um, as opposed to designing your own abstract and um, custom um, tools and uh, user controls and all that kind of fancy stuff so um, first thing I'm going to do is click Silverlight application okay as we go through other tutorials I'm sure we'll go through a lot of these other ones um, I'm going to name this um, first, YouTube. Oops, if I could spell YouTube. Okay. And I'm just going to take that and put that under projects. And we will click OK. Alright, now this is going to create, create a directory um, for a solution. You don't have to worry about adding source control. That's something completely different if you're working with multiple. Um, uh, developers and you're all trying to work off of the same basic solution and um, each one of you takes a piece of the code and, and alters it. So I'm going to click OK and this is going to ask you one more question. Um, it's going to ask you do you want to host your civil application in a new website? I would always recommend to say yes and you can re rename this to whatever you want but I would keep the dot web so that you can differentiate the two um, uh, projects and I'll show you why in a minute. Um, the new project should always be ASP.NET Web Application Project, and the Silverlight version should be four. You can choose three if you have that SDK. Um, if you're familiar with some of Silverlight, that's fine. And I would always recommend you to enable WCF Rio services. Um, as we get farther down the um, uh, the tutorials, you'll I'll be going over what WCF Rio services is and how to use it. But I would get in the habit of using it because enabling it afterwards. Um, I believe as of 2010 Studio, I, at least in the Ultimate Edition, the properties in the properties of the solution, I believe you can add to enable it, but I would enable it here anyway just because if you're using a different version of Studio, you may, may or may not have it. I'm not sure. I'm not up to date on the older versions. So anyway, so ch just ch long story short, just check that and click OK. <clears throat> working on it. Alright, so first thing you're going to see here is you're going to see um, a design view if you've used any other Visual Studio in the past for something like ASP or Windows Forms or Dreamweaver even, you usually have a design view and a code view. Okay, your design view is on top in this case. You can move things around, move your tabs around. They, they let you dock in different places. But this is a good way to start. 
and then you have your code view in this case for the for XAML. Um, I know XA, XAML and it's called XAML. Well, you're gonna love this because actually the um, actual file that's used when you um, build the um, project will actually come in as what they call a zap file, but it's .xap is the extension. So go figure that one out. But in any case, that's what it will be called when you look it up. People will pronounce it that way if it's in a tutorial. Um, so you better get, you might as well get used to it now. So as with most Visual Studio um, applications, you can you have all these controls here that you can copy and paste, drag and drop them in, move them around, all that good stuff, and it'll auto populate in your XAML. All right, you're gonna see as you go forth and you start doing things more and more, you're going to see that the margin kind of messes with your code a little bit, so there's going to be times that you're not going to want to drag and drop and you'll do coding um, on the, what they call the code behind. Okay, so I'll just hit Control-Z twice and I undid that. Um, you'll also notice that if I were to code in here, um, you have a nice little what they call IntelliSense within, um, uh, within Visual Studio. Okay, and um, you can give it, I'm making a button right now, okay, and we'll do text, uh, was it text to the content, content, um, test button, okay, and we'll close it, and I'll actually close that for you, now I didn't give it a width or a height, but you'll notice that the XAML updated right away for you, okay, and then what I can do now is I can shrink it, and it's going to give a nice little margin here of where it's going to be, okay, and it'll relate to where, how you uh, made it, okay. So just to show you kind of um, the basics of how you can use the XAML and the co or the XAML and the design at the same time, okay. Um, you'll notice over to here where I was telling you about needing the dot web. The reason you need dot web or why I would recommend it. Even if you name it something different, I would still call it that web. Because both of these, if you don't look right at these little images right here, you're not going to realize that one's the web and one's the silver light, okay, until you get used to it. So the best way is just to have a dotted web extension, and then you can see it right away which one you happen to be under. Because you're going to have files under here, you're going to have files under here, it's all going to depend on what you're doing. Um, one thing I wanted to make um, also note of was that this visual or this um, um, the when you make the web application you actually have two files here one's an ASPX file one's an HTML file the ASPX the they both work um, interchangeably the only thing you have to do is make sure that when you are going to use one use that one okay um, if you double click on this I'll show you why you would want to edit this there's a lot of stuff in here you'll notice that you don't want to touch, like you don't really need to touch the style um, unless you're going to change the body width of it, um, which actually can be changed lower. I would not recommend changing really any of the JavaScript unless you want specific error codes, um, but even then you can do error codes and other things which we'll go over much more in depth in later tutorials. Uh, <clears throat> one of the things that I wanted to show you was right in here you'll see if you've ever done any uh, ASP, you have your form ID here and um, it's actually making a phone form tag and a run at server time. So this form is this form tag is actually gonna run at um, at load or design time and you're gonna have inside of it an object tag and this object tag is going to reference your zap file. Okay, first youtube.zap. Now you might ask, well it says it's in client bin and it says it's in but if you look here, it's not there, right? Even if you do a show all files, it's not showing up yet. Well, if you'll notice down here, there's a warning. The warning says the first YouTube.web.cs project, which means it's a C-sharp project. I do all my projects in C-sharp. Um, I know Visual Basic a little bit as well, but I just prefer Visual uh, C-sharp. Um, project must be built before client proxy classes can be re uh, generated. So what this means is you have to build your solution or build your project before that file will be created. And when that file is created, it, cre it compiles all this stuff that you put up here into that zap file and puts it in here so that your web page can display it. And that's really bottom line how Silverlight uh, runs. 
All right, so if I do a build here, you're gonna notice that this goes away. Build succeeded, warning goes away, and you'll notice your zap file there. Well, I'm running about just about out of time at this point, so I'm going to pause this now, and uh, we will go over some more of the code and how to add different controls in a later tutorial. Thank you, and I'll see you soon.